políticas binacionales entre Tijuana y San Diego. What has been your experience in binational dance collaborations between Tijuana and San Diego? Pues digo porque quiero uh, uh, explicar cómo que hablo español. Yo nací en Massachusetts, en Boston, y no había ninguna persona de México, pero había personas de Puerto Rico, de, de España, de Cuba, y yo, yo, mi familia era italiana, italianos, y yo quise aprender mucho más Italian, pero no lo ofrecieron, y por eso tenía que, que aprender español. Y por eso cuando yo me encuentro aquí en, en, en la frontera, yo pensé, ¿qué? ¿Qué? How ludicrous is this? I love the whole language, the culture, and now I'm living here at the border, at the largest cross border in the whole world. So I have taken every advantage and I have the opportunity to meet George Willis. George Willis was already coming down here all the time just because he loved the culture. Vigalo. 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 George Willis ha estado en el proceso ocupando recientemente porque al igual que ella, ama la cultura de aquí y las tradiciones de su país. Gracias. Y por eso, cuando yo empecé a, a dar clases aquí en San Diego, aquí en Tijuana, eh, con el ayudo de un señor, no sé si algunos de ustedes lo conocen, pero era Ricardo Peralta. ¿Alguien lo conoce? Era bailarín. Dice él, yo soy gordita, uh, bald, pelo, pelón, sí, y short, fat, and bald, but I'm still a dancer. <laughs> and so I, He invited me, the first person, to come to the Casa de la Cultura and get classes here in Mexico. And then I invited Ricardo. And then among other people like Minerva and uh, people who understood how wonderful and powerful it was to live at the border and to be able to go back and forth. Me mantuve cerca de las personas que entendían lo que era estar siguiendo y viviendo cerca de la frontera. Algunos de los proyectos que, which I had some helping with, was 4x4. I did not invent 4x4, but I helped to bring it here. And this is a, uh, a project in which 4 feet by 4 feet is the entire stage. How many of you have seen 4x4 of it? ¿Cuántos ustedes han visto el papel? 4x4. Also, um, I have uh, enjoyed the work of Luke Sporeano. Invited them several times to perform in San Diego to give workshops. Uh, also, the, the beautiful work of Mira uh, Tapia. Uh, not only in teaching and choreographing, but in just her whole vision, again, as to what could and should happen at a border that is as rich as ours. In constant occasions, I've collaborated with Lux Boreal, who is also part of the 4x4, and I've also invited to San Diego to organize talleres there and compartir the conocimientos that come and go between the borders, as well as I've collaborated with Minerva, y en el ambiente para que imparta también allá sus conocimientos y compartir los aprendizajes que van y vienen en esa comunicación fronteriza entre Tijuana y Santiago. Gracias. 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 Please forgive me. We are all here because we think dance is very important. And I share that with you. 
my first experiences while I was teaching at San Diego State, where one of my students said, well, I'm also taking classes down at the UABC. Why don't you come down and teach a class? So I said, okay. So I went down, taught a few classes, and it was the beginning of a wonderful relationship because, of course, Ruben Bastiano was there. He was the major influence of art in, San, in Tijuana at the time. And that was 1978. <laughs> Eh, la primera vez que vine, yo daba clases en, en San Diego y eh, vine y pasé un poco de clases. Fue el inicio de una gran formación porque, como ven, estaba aquí, conocía a muchas personas y esto fue aproximadamente en 1978. Como saben, Ruben fue but he also, in theater, he also encouraged dance. And it was wonderful to have his support here to make things happen in those early days. Uh, most of the performances were either at the UABC or at the uh, Casetto Castelchona, uh, uh, which was always a joy to perform at. Uh, and Ruben, we would always, to plan our events, we would have to meet in Nelson's, the Nelson Hotel coffee shop, because that was Ruben's office. He didn't want you to come to the university, he wanted to meet you in the coffee house. It was very European. I walked by it last month, and it's not even there anymore, but uh, we were there, and he would talk about how wonderful the arts were, and then we would finally get down to talking about, well, next June, two weeks, I can bring somebody down. <laughs> then we can talk about it. Uh, <laughs> some of the people who have been, helped me bring things across the border and bring things to San Diego. And of course, Professor Ruben Asciano, Minerva Tapia, Margarita Robles, Jorge Dominguez, Domingo Natalia, Mario Peralta, and Ricardo Peralta, Carmen Bejojas, Henry and Angel, Lex Boreal, who have also taken 4x4 to an international level, which is quite wonderful. Gene Isaacs and Alex in Green. But, so I, we've been doing this for 46 years. Now is the time for someone else to step forward. And you don't have to You have no other, there's minimum requirements. If you're a dancer and you have some work that you can put together with some colleagues, bring your friends across. 
there are things that we need to do to make it easier for that to happen. And, but we'll talk about that later. Thank you. George Willis agradeció una, a una lista muy productiva, muy bonita de personas, que yo creo que el nombre es igual, creo que si lo repito, creo que si lo escucharon todos los nombres que él mencionó. Eh, no sé si se me va a otra cosa importante porque ahí están. Ok, vamos a la segunda, a la prueba. Ok, so, vamos a la segunda pregunta, que es para Jean nada más. Eh, ¿Cómo ha sido la colaboración con bailarines y coreógrafos de Tijuana en el evento Trolley Dances? Uh, how has Charlie Dances collaborated with dancers and choreographers from Tijuana? So Charlie Dancers, how many people know about Charlie Dancers? <laughs> uh, from Charlie Dancers, uh, we work together with MTS uh, in San Diego, which is a Charlie people, Metropolitan Transit System. And our audiences come on the trolley with us to go around San Diego and find dances that are created for specific places in San Diego. Uh, this year we're going to go back, I think, towards the border. I'm not sure what uh, San Diego Dance Theater has decided where to go yet, but I'm the brainchild of that. I don't know, what was the reason if I'm your brainchild? What was the reason? Federico. That's Federico. Holly Dances is my idea. And I had the foresight to train Bakit. Again, I don't know how to say that in Spanish. But in other words, nobody can use that name unless they pay me. <laughs> I think that's a good idea, isn't it? But we do it, uh, it's 25 years. And this year we also went to San Francisco where they also purchased the rights to do trolley dances in San Francisco. So it's been, a, and, and For people at the border, it's been an incredible opportunity for all of us to get to know each other uh, and enjoy. So, um, in July, we're having auditions for Charlie Dancers. Uh, last year, we got 85 people came to audition. It's a paid job. It's not for, you don't dance for free. You don't want to dance for free. You don't want to get paid, okay? So that's what we do. It's still run by San Diego Dance Theater. And I think the thing, 85 people, 60 of them are from Mexico. Now what does that tell you? I think it tells you that we figured out that it's really important that dancers are treated as professionals and receive a salary for the work that they're doing. So out of that 85 people, I'm not sure how many people from this side of the border uh, were cast, but I think about 20. And remember, you've done, you've choreographed three poly dancers with, with a mixed group of dancers, not only from Mexico, but mixing together the cultures so that people uh, have to get to know each other. And I think if anything has been uh, effective, Uh, to do that, to create community at the border on both sides and to make it easier for people to go back and forth. I think Charlie Dancers has been uh, the most effective. Can you start with you? Well, can you tell me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie Dancers is her marca. She created it here in San Diego. It's a collaboration that she has with the city of San Diego and transport. Eh, en julio, July, julio son las audiciones, eh, el año pasado vinieron ocho, alrededor de 80 personas, el, alrededor de 60 eh, tenían eh, mexicoamericanos o gente de Tijuana, eh, es, diversos, eh, los coreógrafos tienen la oportunidad de coreografiar no solamente para su gente, sino gente de todos los niveles eh, 
de danza y, y también diversidad de géneros dancísticos y vienen de diferentes partes y es una forma de hacer comunidad eh, dancística y que ella pregunta que, que, es, que, que esto está haciendo una, una, hace una reflexión de qué significa, ¿no? Y, y, y la y, y está, you say something about San Francisco, right? En eh, Por 20 años en San Francisco, California, también los hacen y llevan 25 años. ¿Sí? ¿Se me pasó algo? Yo creo que mucha gente entiende inglés, pero si no, le van a sumar. Voy con eh, George Willis. Y ¿Por qué promover colaboraciones binacionales? Why to promote cross-border dance exchanges? It's important to have cross-border dance. And why dance? It's portable. You can move it. There's no language barrier with dance. It's just bodies communicating. And it fosters relationship and understanding between us. And it shares artistic and cultural values. The benefits, cultural inspiration, creativity, social interaction, and understanding, performance, and professional development. Dice George Wells que está muy importante de tener danza compartida nosotros todos aquí en San Diego, Juan, que aunque no estamos hablando la misma idioma que nosotros, ¿no? pero con la danza y con el arte podemos compartirnos con ese lenguaje universal. Entonces estamos compartiendo los valores artísticos culturales entre los dos regiones y está promoviendo esta interacción social que justo lo que necesitamos más entre la gente. Uh, Jean, ¿qué cuáles han sido los retos en las colaboraciones binacionales? What have been the challenges in binational collaborations? Pero el reto aquí nos vemos ya que la lengua es difícil. Lo que he visto yo es que unas personas aquí o hablan español bien o hablan inglés, pero ningún habla igualmente. Muy pocos de, de todos nosotros porque preferimos hablar en la lengua más cómoda, ¿no? Y, y este es, es, es difícil. And we have to always have everything bilingual, please. Because otherwise, we have outsiders that don't understand what we're saying. And then, so I think that's my biggest uh, challenge. Is to somehow make it understandable for everybody. Sí, es muy necesario que tenemos todos los que estamos ofreciendo aquí en, el, en la región, aparte en inglés, también en español, para que no estamos excluyendo a nadie por no entender. ¿no? Entonces, para eso es lo que Jim se siente como un reto que todavía está sucediendo entre estas dos ciudades, aunque sea arte, educación, etc. Uh, I want to say that Matthew is one of the dancers that we have the privilege of, of having in our dances, and uh, I know that you were going to show up tonight, so <laughs> thank you. That's Matthew. Y, sí, Matthew es uno de los que cruza la frontera regularmente, eh, trabajando en ambos lados de la frontera. Eh, I, yo no soy la que responde las preguntas, pero sí me gustaría sumar a los retos eh, el cruce fronterizo. Se, es, eh, uno de los grandes retos para quien está trabajando en danza es la espera, la larga espera, tanto de ida como de regreso, de lo que tengo que vivir. 
eh, eso ha sido un, un reto para todos eh, los que quieren hacer colaboraciones. No las paran, pero sí les da problema. Ok, George, I have a question for you because we have choreography and we have one hour. Okay, okay. so, George, ¿qué podemos hacer para facilitar el cruce, para el cruce fronterizo en los bailarines, maestros, promotores y compañías de danza? What can we do to facilitate the border crossing of dancers, teachers, promoters, and dance companies? It's always a challenge, and the challenge always changes. But here are some thoughts. Sentry passions for artists. More funding, of course. For our own government, they need to make it easier for us to hire dancers from Mexico. It used to be easy, but now it's extremely difficult. But it's part of all our challenges. And I'm encouraging all of you that are involved in dance, no matter what level, from student to the professional, start thinking about it. When I began with cross-border things 46 years ago, the university where I taught, when I had a job, but Nobody asked me to do cross-border things. Nobody asked me to bring dancers from San Diego. Nobody asked me to take dancers to Tijuana. Um, but it was important, so I did it. And if we can encourage professionals and academics to see that cross-border exchanges are part of their responsibility, my thought for the day. If professionals and academics can see that collaboration with cross-border activities is part of their responsibility. Look, no. Elisa, look, Elisa George, is, eh, um, ese preguntacito se ha sido un reto y cada vez, con cada año, con cada diferente administración de gobierno, se reto cambia su forma eh, en ser más difícil. Um, una propuesta que tiene es como tener una fase especial para artistas, también más, um, más por supuesto, para los artistas, para poder tener que hacer ese cruce con el uso. El gobierno de Estados Unidos siempre ha tenido ese problema en trabajar como legalmente gente fuera de su país, ¿no? Y por los años que están pasando, siempre, tienen, siempre están poniendo esa agenda política como tratando de excluir la gente que no está dentro de Estados Unidos. Y entonces con las artistas para poder pagarles y trabajar legalmente, es un problema muy, muy grande a mí. Y antes, cuando George cruzaba aquí en Tijuana, nadie le dijo que necesitaba trabajar con la pista de acá o que necesitaba hacer esa colaboración, pero lo decidió porque vio la oportunidad y vio tantos valores que estaban aquí y tanta arte que está creciendo aquí en la ciudad de Tijuana, aparte de San Diego. Entonces, se siente que los colaboradores entre artistas, aunque sea por la frontera o no, es súper importante para que el arte se pueda refrescar y crecer. Gracias, Matías. Sí, Matías, ¿cómo se ve proactivo, pero también las instituciones, ambas responsabilidades de la sociedad? en general y el gobierno. Uh, this is a question, es una pregunta para ambos. This is a question for both. Uh, para cerrar esta sección, ¿qué les gustaría comentar sobre la danza contemporánea en general y qué ofrece esta a los públicos? To conclude this section, what would you like to comment on contemporary dance and what this gender offer to the audiences. 
I think people, uh, contemporary dance is a little bit easier to um, imagine yourself doing. So when we go to classical ballet concerts, we all, I know I always look at them and say, I could never do that. I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> but with modern dance or contemporary dance, you almost feel like you could do it. Your body, my body kinetically feels how those dancers' muscles are working. And so it's something you could imagine yourself being part of a little bit easier than people in toe shoes, which is so difficult. So that's why I think uh, it's a good thing to inoculate people no, uh, to help people to understand dance by starting with modern dance. I think uh, the COVID hurt everybody in terms of changing the attitude around going to concerts and getting out in the world. And that, that hurt a lot. I think for dance, we need to keep reminding ourselves in modern dance that it has to be for the audience. They have to be part of it. We can be esoteric, but if the audience isn't skipping along with us, it's not going to be very popular. And so I think we have work to do. Uh, there's always new ideas, new approaches. Some of it is received well, some not, but we have to keep going forward. So if you're an artist, please don't give up. <laughs> keep showing us what you see and that you want to share with us. La respuesta de quien dijo que la danza contemporánea en su, en su perspectiva es más fácil como de imaginarse, uno asciende. Eh, es una forma que se puede conectar de diferentes formas al cuerpo y es mucho más fácil que lo que, es, lo que vemos como público en parte. Entonces, siento que se puede ayudar a una persona a introducirse en la danza por meterse más por el lado de danza moderna o danza contemporánea. Y la respuesta de George fue que él piensa que el COVID y todo el rango de la... De, lastimó mucho que el público asistiría a los eventos de arte y danza. Y piensa que el público es mucho más importante y parte de toda la todo el show que está haciendo, ¿no? Entonces, si el público el arte no puede verse. Y también quería mencionar a las artistas jóvenes emergentes que no te rindes como artista. Y más en este momento, ¿no? Siempre tienes su voz, tienes tu propia voz para compartir tus, tus pensamientos al público y es muy importante que lo haces. Bueno, eh, en lo que sigue, eh, thank you so much, George. Thank you so much, Dean. Um, so we have, tenemos como unos cinco minutos para hacer pregunta y respuesta. En lo que sigue, vamos a ver tres coreografías. Y ahorita voy a ceder eh, a Armando que me diga cuántos minutos tenemos para hacer preguntas y respuestas y después les digo qué es lo que vamos a ver. <risa>